Here we go. The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Welcome, everyone. Fred Gleek here with Dave Fenoy for a great webinar. Dave, how are you? Up? How are you, Fred? Uh, oh, haven't talked to you in a while, man. Where you been? No, I've been uh, like I was telling you a little bit off uh, off mic there. I've been getting everything ready, spending the last many days and for many days in the future now, preparing my house for sale and renting my place here in Henderson, Nevada. I'm getting ready to move uh, mm. out of California, all as much as I love it. It's time It's time to go. Oh, okay. I got you. I got you. Well, I'm uh, doing well, and I'm not leaving California that I know of. Uh, so <laughs> you haven't you haven't been deported. I, I haven't been deported, um, they, and every time I leave the country, they let me back in. So uh, amazing. So far, so good, and <laughs> I, I think that that will remain. Um, and uh, we're uh, you know we're we're getting started here just a little bit early, but we're gonna uh, just chit chat a little bit and. Uh, beforehand let people get a chance to get in um and but those who are there if you got a little question uh you can pop that question into uh the chat is that the correct place yeah steve bailey's on board here okay janet peters made it okay okay uh let's see who else anybody else who else is out there uh anybody from outside the u.s i'm always curious if that's happening um, and if so, where anybody, I'm just, uh, you know, that happened, that them. happens from time to time, uh, especially oh, yeah. since, uh, since, uh, traveling, uh, to Columbia and coming back, uh, I've had a number of people from, uh, Latin America who've been tuning in. I have some people from time to time from Australia, uh, and also, and Europe, of course, uh, a lot of people from London from time to time and every now and then. Uh, somebody from the Middle East. You know, it's funny because Sarah comments here, she's from Toronto area, and she had to put in parentheses, Canada, just in case I was geographically impaired. Ah, <laughs> well, this is America after all, and we we really can't read maps. We don't know where anything is, unfortunately. I, I'm always surprised when I go abroad, people are much more aware of where everything is and where things are in America than Americans are of where anything else is in the rest of the world. It's a little Having grown up overseas, I would agree that Americans are geocentric. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, a plane went down. Well, how many Americans were on it? Oh, yeah, there you go. Top of the hour, Dave. Go ahead. Let's get started. Well, so we won't talk. well let's get started. Uh, I'm Dave Fenoy, and probably most of the people who are here um, – know who I am, know what my, my history is, but I'm going to blow through that really quick. Uh, just in case you don't, uh, I've had the good fortune of having a career where I've done some of everything. Uh, TV promos for CBS, the WB, ABC, Hulu, dozens more. Uh, In-show announce, uh, about 15 years, I was the uh, announcer for the Image Awards. I've done the Billboard Music Awards, Grammy Awards, Choice Awards, uh, a number other non-broadcast awards. Uh, you can still hear me on Lexus commercials. Uh, as a matter of fact, I have a McDonald's commercial running right now and I've done work. I've done work for Nike, Marine World, Africa, USA, and lots and lots and lots of other, uh, commercials, uh, video games, uh, IMDB called me one of the 20 best video game voices of all time. Uh, more than 400 video games, even though I am not a video game player, uh, animation, Incredibles 2. KO, uh, OKKO, OK Rugrats, Captain Planet, uh, New Kids on the Block, <laughs> Pro Stars. Uh, I have done narration for Science Channel, Discovery Channel, uh, Na National Geographic, ABC Mouse, uh, and quite a few others. Um, I have done that work and I continue to do that work. Uh, as a voiceover educator, uh, I have become over the years uh, one of LA's most respected and sought after voiceover instructors. Uh, I've had the opportunity to teach all over the United States, London, France, um, I'm setting up something now in Australia. And I'm going to have to add uh, Colombia to the list because I was just down there teaching. And uh, let's see. And we're going to, at the end of this, uh, you're going to have an opportunity to uh, purchase at a really good price a number of uh, 
webinars and and workshops that I've done um, for a lot, 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 lot less uh, that you would have paid uh, to take them in person. Uh, auditions, how to read copy, the basics of what I call taking the words off the page, TV promos and trailers, uh, narration, uh, video games. Uh, and we're going to talk a little bit about uh, finding your your sweet spot, finding your uh, uh, signature voice. Uh, how to read copy. So let's just jump right in. For most VO talent, the way we get work is via auditions. And if your auditions are not good, guess what? You're not going to get the job. Uh, we learn specific techniques uh, to make your reads more natural, believable, and relatable to the listener. Uh, you'll learn how to find your signature voice. Uh, too often aspiring VO actors spend too much effort trying to sound like someone else and actually don't know how they really sound or don't appreciate how they sound. Uh, and going to help you learn some techniques to eliminate that dreaded reedy read. And I'm going to bring you in on this because uh, before we got in, we were just talking and uh, you asked me a question. Uh, you were on talking to uh, someone about voiceover and they asked you, Fred? Fred? Yes. Okay. Yes. Asked, <laughs> oh, oh, that was my cue. They asked me the following. They said, hey, uh, I get scripts, and whenever I get these scripts, they're filled with various kinds of commentary as to how I should read the script, noting certain individuals or certain environments, et cetera, et cetera. That's what they got. Yeah. And they ask you, should you pay attention or just wing it? And you told them to wing it. <laughs> um. And uh, amazingly, that's not bad advice. Um, you know, the people who are casting these things, uh, they, they can't afford Morgan Freeman or whoever else they happen to mention, but they have a feeling they want something like that. And all too often what happens to the voice actor is like, oh, wow, they want a Morgan Freeman read. So they try to imitate Morgan Freeman. They try to give him his voice. What they're really asking for is a feeling. Uh, so the best thing you can do, take that all in and then trust your instincts and give them you, give them you. All right. Um, let's talk about eliminating that, uh, that, that, uh, reedy read. Uh, first thing you do, familiarize yourself with the copy by reading it three times in your head, then mouthing it quietly three more times. Um, you can also record a slow, accurate take and listen back for the same result. Uh, both of these methods work or do both. Maybe you read it through once or twice, uh, mouthing it once and then do a recording. And when I say slow and accurate, I mean, like I am talking to you now, take the copy and let's take a quick look at eliminating the reedy read. First, familiarize yourself with the copy by reading it three times in your head and then mouthing it quietly three more times. Now, what does that do? You begin to program your brain for the words you are going to have to say because ultimately, the words are there to remind you of what you are saying. You don't want to have the feeling of, I am reading this and I am trying to figure out what this word is followed by this word. Uh, and then, of course, read the phrases, not the words. I also notice that people just way, way, way too often are trying to make sure that you hear and understand every word. The truth of the matter is, just about everybody you know, yourself included, your enunciation is fine. Don't try to make the words have meaning by how you say them. Don't try to make your read uh, uh, more articulate uh, by hitting each and every word. People are going to understand what you're saying. Which sounds better? The result being, by the time you're ready to do a real take, the words are only there to remind you of what you're saying. Or, the result being, by the time you're ready to do a real take, the words are only there to remind you of what you're saying. Which do you believe? The second would, of course, because that's not reading. All right. Uh, 
And let's let's uh, can we can we get somebody on? We sure can. So if you just say yes, capital Y, yes, the question box, we'll let you try and uh, practice. So that's what we're here for. Okay, who I'm gonna. Wants to go? Who wants to go? There you go. Chris. Chris says he wants in here. Let me get Chris for a second here. Chris, hold on one sec. Uh, Chris Lewis, uh, you are now unmuted. Go ahead, Chris. How you doing, Chris? Hey, Fred. Hey, how's it going? It's going wonderfully. About yourself. Oh, can't complain. Can't complain. All right. Well, I'm going to have you. Can you see the screen well enough? I can. Okay, excellent. Uh, let's, let's read this piece of copy. We're going to talk about it a little bit first. I'm going to read it out loud to you slowly so you hear everything. We're going to do one quick uh, conversation about what it's all about, and then we're going to go, okay? Awesome. Okay. A lot happens over the course of a tank of gas. Mad dashes to the pharmacy. Hours spent in the school drop-off line. And seven trips to the grocery store. Wait, forgot the ice cream. Make that eight. But a tank of gas doesn't just fuel errands. It tells a story. One that could begin at the dry cleaners and end at a hidden sloppy Joe joint. Then, right back to the cleaners. It's not just about filling up the tank. It's about where that tank will take you next. Philip 66. Live to the full. Now, that was not a read. That was just reading the words to, to get it in my mind and to let you hear it. So you, <laughs> so you hear what, what it's going. Do the same thing for me one time. Okay. <clears throat> a lot happens over the course of a tank of gas. Mad dashes to the pharmacy, spent hours spent in the school drop-off line, and seven trips to the grocery store. Wait. Forgot the ice cream? Make that eight. But a tank of gas doesn't just fuel errands, it tells a story. One that could begin at the dry cleaners and end at a sloppy Joe joint. Then, right back to the cleaners. It's not just about filling up the tank, it's about where that tank will take you next. Philip 66. Live to the full. Okay, now you have the words. You made a couple of little uh, reading errors in there. I hope they're not going to... Uh, bother you later. The more accurate you are on that read, the more mm. accurate uh, you're more likely to be. I mean, you can correct that, but if you've read it correctly the first time, uh, your brain is is pretty much programmed to do it correctly when you're giving us the read. Um, so, is this a real serious commercial? Uh, what 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 are they doing here to 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 sell this product? I think they're trying to give you more of a more or less a day in the life. They're trying to, you know, it's trying to the text or the copy is supposed to be relatable to you in that every man, every day type of thing. Absolutely. Every way, I should say. Every man, every woman type of thing. Exactly. Um, so now I want you to lighten up your enunciation. I want to uh uh and and let's see what there's a little humor in here. Let's see what you do with it. Okay. A lot happens over the course of a tank of gas. Mad dashes to the pharmacy, hours spent in the school drop-off line, and seven trips to the grocery store. Oh, wait, forgot the ice cream. Make that eight. But a tank of gas doesn't just fuel errands. It tells a story. One that could begin at the dry cleaners and end at the... and end at a hidden sloppy Joe joint. Then right back to the cleaners. It's not... <clears throat> Excuse me. It's not just about filling up the tank. It's about where the tank will take you next. Philip 66. Live to the full. You know, you have a really interesting voice. I like I like the, the quality of your voice. Um, it it automatically uh, relaxes you. Uh, you're somebody that you want to listen to, somebody that sounds like you have a bit of wisdom. Um, so I want you to lean into that. Uh, not, okay. not listening to your voice, uh, but mm. I want you to move this along a little more. I want just a little bit more smile. And okay. you notice the place where you messed up when you were reading it for accuracy? You messed up again. Um, I did. I, yeah, I did. I did. Yeah. yeah. Uh, mm. and you know, one of the difficulties with, uh, being a voice actor is you are reading somebody else's words that you have to make your own. Okay? 
Uh, you probably wouldn't say and end at a hidden sloppy Joe joint, or you wouldn't you wouldn't have written it that way, perhaps. Uh, <clears throat> but these are the words we have. So, right. all right, and with that, we're gonna move it along a little bit more. Want to hear uh, the humor in it, uh, and I don't want you to try to give it meaning by how you say the words. I want you to give it meaning by how you feel about the story or the stories that you're telling here. All right. Ready when you are. All right. A lot happens over the course of a tank of gas. Mad dashes to the pharmacy, hours spent in the school drop-off line, and seven trips to the grocery store. Wait, we got the ice cream. Make that eight. But a tank of gas doesn't just fuel larynx. It tells a story. One that could begin at the dry cleaners and end at a hidden sloppy joe joint, then right back to the cleaners. It's not just about filling up the tank. It's about where the tank will take you next. Philip 66, live to the full. Okay. I, once again, love your voice. Reed was a little clunky. Can I do a read? Okay. <clears throat> yeah, go ahead. A lot happens over the course of a tank of gas. Mad dashes to the pharmacy. Hours spent in the school drop-off line. And seven trips to the grocery store. Wait, forgot the ice cream. Make that eight. But a tank of gas doesn't just fuel errands. It tells a story. One that could begin at the dry cleaners and end at a hidden sloppy jojo. Then, right back to the cleaners. It's not just about filling up the tank. It's about where that tank will take you next. Philip 66. Live to the full. How'd you feel about that? That was, that was nice. Okay, now... I'm not leaning into my voice. I'm not trying to lean into my voice. And okay. I'm gliding over the words. And I'm the humor is coming from the looks at life that are there. One one more time. All right. And and give yourself just a little bit of time in between each of those lines. You know, it's mad dashes to the pharmacy. Hour spent in the school drop-off line. And seven trips to the grocery store. Wait. Okay. A lot happens over the course of a tank of gas. Mad dashes to the pharmacy. Hours spent in the school drop-off line. And seven trips to the grocery store. Oh, wait, forgot the ice cream. Make that eight. But a tank of gas doesn't just fuel errands. It tells a story. One that could begin at the dry cleaners and end at a hidden sloppy jaw joint. Then right back to the cleaners. It's not just about filling up the tank. It's about where the tank will take you next. Philip 66, live to the full. Nice. You have a nice voice. I, I, I really like your voice. Um, practice moving it along just a little bit more. Um, hmm. Live in the feeling that you're trying to get across and not in uh, how you're trying to say the words. You're going to hear me say that a lot. But give okay. them a hand, ladies and gentlemen. Let's, uh, Good job. Um, and, uh, go ahead. Oops, yeah, you got a question? Whoops. I'm sorry. I muted you. Hold on, Chris. I'm muting it. I'm muting it. Sorry. Sorry, Chris. Go ahead. Okay. Let me say something real quick. Mm -hmm. Dave, Fred, Fred has been, Fred at one point was very much trying to put me together with you, Dave, and I see why now, because you and I should definitely work on this type of thing together, and I've been looking forward to trying to get that done, and at some point, I will be happy to kneel at the door of your Shaolin <laughs> temple and be your student. <laughs> well, I, 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 I don't think I'd want to call it kneeling at the right. door. Yeah, let's, let's, yeah, let's not. <laughs> but I, I will Thanks. be, I will be happy to work with you. Absolutely. Uh, very <laughs> kind words, Chris. Thank you, buddy. Yeah. Thank you. All right. I've got okay. another piece of copy here. Um, now, um, let's see. Let's say uh, they said a uh, big announcer voice. Get all the good stuff about TV without all the bad stuff. Uh, you can stream your favorite shows with no annual contract. It's live TV with no satellites and no bulky hard hardware. Isn't that great news? Uh, mo uh, more for your uh, more for your all the good, none of the bad thing. Uh, now, this one does a little tough because there's so much other stuff going on in there. Uh, we have somebody who wants to give that a shot. Now, the thing is, I don't want to assume this. I, I was going to call on Isabella, but 
they say directions to mail. So should I? You know what? I don't. Them? I don't care about that. And and as a matter of fact, when you hear uh, these spots, it's a female. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Let's do it. So Isabella, I'm going to bring you up. I just saw the uh, thing. So Isabella, you are now unmuted. Go ahead, please. How are you, okay. Isabella? Good. How are you? Real good. Real good. Um, now, this is a new piece of copy I've added. And uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna read it for you one more time because I'm not sure you were listening or available to listen at that point. Trying to get get on. Uh, Direct TV now gives you more for your thing. Get all the good stuff about TV without all the bad stuff. You can still stream your favorite shows with no annual contract. It's live TV with no satellites and no bulky hardware. Isn't that great news? More for your all the good, none of the bad thing. Now, one of the things we notice here is you've got uh, a couple in between a lawyer, uh, a space mechanic. Um, people are saying things responding to you, but you don't have to respond to them. Just give, okay. just give yourself a little time. Uh, read through it one time for accuracy. Okay, and what do you think about the big announcer voice? Is uh, that... Don't worry about that. Don't worry about it. Do you want me to just read through without doing a read first? Yes. Or do a read, okay. Direct TV Now gives you more for your thing. Get all the good stuff about TV without all the bad stuff. You can still stream your favorite shows with no annual contract. It's live TV with no satellites and no bulky hardware. Isn't that great news? More for your all of the good, none of the bad thing. Nice. Uh, and I noticed up there, we are, we are in a commercial, Direct TV Now. That is the name of the product. Okay. So on one, read. I'm ready for the read. I just wanted to uh, let you know that. Okay, great. Direct TV Now gives you more for your thing. Get all the good stuff about TV without all the bad stuff. You can still stream your favorite shows with no annual contract. It's live TV with no satellites and no bulky hardware. Isn't that great news? More for your all of the good, none of the bad thing. Okay. Uh, you've got a nice, easy style, but what I want you to do is enunciate less. Okay. Uh, I, here's what I hear. Direct TV now gives you more for your thing. Get all the good stuff about TV. And what I want to hear is a little, little more just saying it. Direct TV now gives you more for your thing. Get all of the good stuff about TV without all of the bad stuff. You can still stream your favorite shows with no annual contract. It's live TV with no satellites and no bulky hardware. Isn't that great news? More for your all the good, none of the bad thing. Cool. All right. <clears throat> Direct TV Now gives you more for your thing. Get all the good stuff about TV without all the bad stuff. You okay, let, let's, 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 hold on. Um, okay. let's get all the good stuff about TV without all the bad stuff. We still mm -hmm. want to know exactly what it's saying. Um, you had that when you were over enunciating. Let's, uh -huh. let's also have that when you're not. Okay. Direct TV Now gives you more for your thing. Get all the good stuff about TV without all the bad stuff. You can still stream your favorite shows with no annual contract. It's live TV with no satellites and no bulky hardware. Isn't that great news? More for your all of the good, none of the bad thing. Okay, nice. I would still like you to even have a little less of the enunciation. One of the things we, we, we hear these days, um, I was at, at an anime conference uh, and was on a panel with voiceover, and uh, the person who does casting, she does, cast most of the commercials in L.A., as a matter of fact, and uh, one of the things she said, big, deep, beautiful voices and people who enunciate too clearly, gone. Mm -hmm. they, they eliminate <laughs> them right away. Uh, because we're a casual society now. Uh, mm -hmm. So we just, we just want somebody like us to tell us. Direct TV now gives you more for your thing. Get all of the good stuff about TV without all the bad stuff. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm 
enunciating a little less than I should just to overplay my hand there so you, you, you get the idea? Not quite so crisp because mm -hmm. your enunciation is, is fine. You don't have to do more uh, than you ordinarily would in a, a conversation with a friend. Mm -hmm. Great. Thank you. Should I go again? Or one more time. It? One more time. One more time. Okay, cool. Direct TV now gives you more for your thing. Uh, 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 whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh, did I ever do it? Yeah. Uh, Direct TV yeah, now okay. gives you more for your thing. Get all of the good stuff about TV without all the bad stuff. Get all of the good stuff about TV without all of the bad stuff. You can still stream your favorite shows with no annual contract. It's live TV with no satellites and no bulky hardware. Isn't that great news? More for your all the good, none of the bad thing. Okay. Direct TV now gives you more for your thing. Get all the good stuff without T. Uh, but let me try that again. Direct TV now gives you more for your thing. Get all the good stuff about TV without all the bad stuff. Without all the bad stuff. <laughs> without all the bad stuff. You can still stream your favorite shows with no. Uh, oh my God! Now I'm overthinking it. Take with a deep no breath. Take a, take a take a take a deep breath. Go from the top. Yes, will do. Direct TV now gives you more for your thing. Get all the good stuff about TV without all the bad stuff. You can still stream your favorite shows with no annual contract. It's live TV with no satellites and no bulky hardware. Isn't that great news? More for your all of the good, none of the bad thing. Nice, getting better, getting better. And, right. and just one more little thing at the top. Um, ordinarily, I would say, oh, don't hit the use yours, me's, my's. Hit that your in that, that first line. Just just give me that. Okay, hit the you, give you the more your. your thing. Okay. Yeah. Direct TV now gives you more for your thing. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Nice. Give her a hand, ladies and gentlemen. And, oh, and, 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 and once you. again, you have, you have a really nice voice. You have a voice that is money right now. Uh, yep. ju just say it talk to that friend Thank all you. right um <clears throat> let's talk about uh, uh tv promos uh there was a time there were three networks that everybody watched but now there are hundreds of ways to watch tv type programming not only did we add uh you know the cable channels but now we've got netflix amazon hulu uh, and there's some other ways to watch TV. I think uh, YouTube TV is even there. Um, more than ever, cable stations are targeting specific audiences, and the voices that promote the programming on those have to relate to that audience. Um, and, and in my workshop on voice acting for uh, TV promos, you'll explore a variety of promo genres, drama, comedy, sports, news, uh, and a variety of the lifestyle promo categories. You'll learn some of the specific techniques like uh, word elongation that allow the listener to hear every word, uh, every important word of that show, when and on what network. Uh, all right, let's pick up a piece of copy here. Now, this is comedy, and I, I think everybody remembers this show, How I Met Your Mother. And um, <clears throat> this is one in comedy promos the rule of thumb is to be the fan, the friend, the regular person that is sharing this information about the television show. Uh, who wants to who wants to do this comedy promo? Okay, so I see that TJ had raised his hand earlier. <coughs> I'm gonna give TJ a shot here. TJ, one second, let me find you. TJ, you are unmuted. Go ahead. How you doing, TJ? But I don't see it. he's unmuted, but he's there he is. There you are, TJ. How are you, TJ? I'm doing good, Dave. Excellent, excellent. Uh well, once again, same rules apply. Let's read through it one time slowly. Life is full of emotions. So let how I met your mother put a smile on your face. Get in touch with your feelings. Cause Barney and the gang know how to get you in the mood on how I met your mother. Uh, do you notice the joke in here? Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, that the, the life full of emotions, smile on your face, get in touch with your feelings. And then, of course, the little wink, wink. Uh, they know how to get you in the mood on how I met your mother. Read through it. Right. once. 
read through it one time just to get the words in your mouth. Okay. Life is full of emotions. So let How I Met Your Mother put a smile on your face. Get in touch with your feelings. Because Barney and the gang know how to get you in the mood on How I Met Your Mother. Okay. Let's see what you do with it. Life is full of emotions. So let How I Met Your Mother put a smile on your face. Get in touch with your feelings. Because Barney and the gang know how to get you in the mood on How I Met Your Mother. Now, I'm going to say your second read wasn't that much different than your accuracy read. And what, really? we, what we want to do is, yeah, oh, yeah, we're going to need to pick up the pace on this and just be more of a regular person. Life is full of emotions. So let How I Met Your Mother put a smile on your face. Get in touch with your feelings, because Barney and the gang know how to get you in the mood on How I Met Your Mother. Gotcha. A little more that direction. Okay. Life is full of emotions. So let How I Met Your Mother put a smile on your face. Get in touch with your feelings, because Barney and the gang know how to get you in the mood on How I Met Your Mother. Okay. Now, without trying to uh, give the, those, those pregnant pauses to just, let's say it a little more. Life is full of okay. emotions. So let How I Met Your Mother put a smile on your face. Get in touch with your feelings, because Barney and the gang know how to get you in the mood on How I Met Your Mother. Okay. Move it along and throw it away a little bit more. Nice little smile. Okay. Life is full of emotions. So let How I Met Your Mother put a smile on your face. Get in touch with your feelings, because Barney and the gang know how to get you in the mood on How I Met Your Mother. Much, much nicer. Now I'm going to want you to not hit, uh, I mean, I hit it, but uh, uh, soften up the smile on your face. You know, so, uh, so, how, so let How I Met Your Mother put a smile on your face. Uh, get, in touch gotcha. with your, get in touch with your feelings. Don't hit the your there, because Barney and the gang know how to get you in the mood. Just say it. You know, this is going to go by fast, and most of the time... Uh, you're going to feel like I don't have enough time to get this all in. Uh, so practice being able to just go through each of these lines. Okay. Life is full of emotions. I'm going to stop so you. For, I'm going to stop you again. That okay. life is just life is full of emotions. Don't give me a pause after life. Okay. Life is full of emotions. So let how I met your mother put a smile on your face. Get in touch with your feelings. Because Barney and the gang know how to get you in the mood on How I Met Your Mother. Nice. Nice. Uh, if we were going to do it again, I'd say just put a little bit more smile on. Uh, it might dial up the energy 10%, but nice read. A much better read that third time than the first time. Huge improvement. Yeah. Huge Over improvement. Nice, nicely job. done. Cool. Thanks. All right. Oh, and of course, if we're going to be doing uh, TV promos, we're going to do drama. So uh, who, who's, who's very dramatic? Okay, we'll look for the dramatic here. Let me just see. Let me see. I think Phil, Phil Kaufman might be dramatic, but I'm just guessing. Phil, let's see if you're dramatic. When you come on and I unmute you, let me hear some drama. You're unmuted now, Phil. Dramatic. <laughs> hey, Phil, how you doing? Yeah. Good. How are you doing, Dave? Real good. Real good. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna say that the areas where um, the the read is very stylized still is in the drama read, and the drama read is also uh, very close to, if not the same, most of the time as the trailer read. Um, and one of the the key things you want to be able to do with that is elongate your words so everyone hears everything. Uh, so instead of uh, before she ruled her empire, she was already, that wouldn't be it. Before she ruled her empire, she was already one tough cookie. This September, the queen of prime time comes to WGN America. Can you tell how I've, I've just stretched everything out just a little bit? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Well, let's read one time for accuracy. Uh, we're going to, before she ruled her empire, uh, just to get it in your head. Okay. And the name is uh, Taraja Taraji P Henson. You haven't been paying. You haven't been paying attention to black culture. She is a huge star. Uh, Taraji P Henson. Okay. 
Gotcha. Before she ruled her empire, she was already one tough cookie. This September, the queen of prime time comes to WGN America. Taraji P. Henson. Taraji. 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 Taraji P. Henson in Person of Interest. Person of Interest, weeknights this September on WGN America. Okay, cool. Now, you know, you, you by not being able to pronounce Taraji P. Henson, uh, you bring up something that, we all have to go through is, and I was kind of teasing you. Um, none of us know all the names of all the stars out there. There are just too many of them now. There are too many outlets. Um, and the way to learn a name, once you get it, say it a few times. Taraji P. Henson. Taraji right. P. Henson. Yeah, just say it Taraji. three or four. Yeah. Taraji P. Henson. Taraji P. Henson. By GPNs. Excellent. Okay. All right. Now, I want you to also, in this case, honor uh, the pauses, the three dots, after she was, she was already one tough cookie. Well, there's a joke there because her name in, the, in one of her shows is Cookie. Uh-huh. Uh, uh, the Queen of Primetime comes to... So, this September, pause, the Queen of Primetime, pause, comes to WGN America. All right, let's 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 uh, try one. Okay. Before she ruled her empire, she was already one tough cookie. This September, the queen of prime time comes to WGN America. Taraji P. Henson, person of interest. Person of interest, weeknights, this September on WGN America. All right, much better. Now... Even though I'm saying to uh, elongate your words a little bit, I still want you to move it along with a little more energy. I'll give you an idea of what I mean. Before she ruled her empire, she was already one tough cookie. This September, the queen of primetime comes to WGN America. Taraji P. Henson in Person of Interest. Person of Interest, weeknights this September on WGN America. Okay. Before she ruled her empire, she was already one tough cookie. This September, the queen of prime time comes to WGN America. Taraji P. Henson in Person of Interest. Person of Interest. Weeknights this September on WGN America. Okay, that was, that was better. Now I want you to do one other thing for me. Bring your volume down to just above a whisper. Before she ruled her empire, she was already one tough cookie. This September, the queen of prime time comes to WGN America. Taraji P. Henson in Person of Interest. Person of Interest. Weeknights this September on WGN America. You know what? Pretty nice, uh, especially th this. This is a learned skill uh, that drama read, and you did pretty good with it. I'll keep working on that. Just above a whisper, you will find so much drama right there. And you'll notice how there's not a lot of sing song in my voice. Uh, th that's also one of the keys. Nicely done. Nicely done. Give him yeah, a hand. Thank you, Dave. Uh, you're welcome. Well, let's talk, yeah. we're, we're, we're moving pretty fast. Oh, you know what? Uh, so let's talk about narration. Um, actually, narration offers the most opportunity for voice actors right now. Uh, there are numerous genres, audio books, science and nature narration, e-learning for all ages, and of course, corporate narration. Uh, today, even explainer narration offers numerous opportunities, thanks to YouTube and the number of products and apps that need voices to explain uh, not who, but how to use them, silly rabbit. Uh, so let's look at uh, what is narration. Before saying exactly what narration is, let's explore what narration is not. It is not selling. It is not promoting. It is not reporting. Narration is telling story. Narration is storytelling, I should say. Uh, 
To be a successful narrator, you must be a storyteller. Now, I hope we have some storytellers in the house here because uh, we got some stories to tell here. Um, I suspect we do, Dave. What's that? I suspect we do. I suspect we do. Let's see if we can find a storyteller here. Okay. I'm. You know what? I think that I'm going to give this storytelling award to Miss Janet Peters, who I suspect is an excellent storyteller. You know what? I have uh, heard Janet and worked with her some, and she has a marvelous voice and read. And, uh, and you know, I almost don't want to say marvelous voice to people anymore because I, I don't want to pe people to get in the thought of, oh, it's my voice that gets me work. It's not. What gets Dave, you work is being able to Dave, connect. Here is Janet Peters. Janet, you're unmuted. Hey, Janet. She's unmuted, but the mic is not connected. Oh, no. Oh, my, oh my God. Janet, where are you? Well, we'll come back to you, Janet. Okay. Uh, okay. Well, after that grand introduction, I thought I was going to pull that off. But <laughs> it didn't work. It didn't work. Um, I'm going to go with Sarah. I don't know if you can live up to that billing that I just gave, Janet, but here you go. Sarah. Come on down. I am ready. Hey, Sarah, how are you? Very good. Thanks, Dave. All right. And once again, uh, one of the keys to doing good voiceover is to prepare. That means reading through the copy one time. I'm going to read it through one time. Uh, and, you know, you, you might have looked at this and got down to that one, two, three, four, that, that first big paragraph and gone, oh, my God, what are these words? Um the deadliest animal in the world. The deadliest animal in the world should be in the world. Kills more, pe kills more people each year than every other animal combined. Makes hundreds of millions of people sick. And is half the length of a staple. It's the mosquito. And a lot of mosquitoes are bad bugs. Like one species, Aedes aegypti. These bad bugs bite. And these bad bugs breed. They're an invasive species that spreads diseases like Zika, Dengue, and Chikagunga. Diseases that stop people from working and going to school. Most of these diseases don't have effective vaccines, so we have to stop the bad bugs. Except pesticides can be toxic, and clearing standing water doesn't work, because people can never find all the places bad bugs live. So they almost always come back, biting and breeding. We need a better way to stop the bad bugs. Luckily, there are good bugs. Good bugs are the same kind of mosquito, but good bugs can't bite. Good bugs can't breed. And most importantly, good bugs can't stop uh, good bugs can stop bad bugs. All right, you want to walk through that one for me one time before we get us a, a, a performance? Yes, please, that'd be great. The deadliest animal in the world kills more people each year than every other animal combined, makes hundreds of millions of people sick, and is half the length of a staple. It's the mosquito. And a lot of mosquitoes are bad bugs. Like one species, Aedes aegypti, these bad bugs bite and these bad bugs breed. They're an invasive species that spreads diseases like Zika, Dengue, and Chikungunya. Is that how you say that? Yeah, Zika, Dengue, and Chikungunya. Chikungunya, yeah. Chikungunya. Diseases that stop people from working and going to school. Most of these diseases don't have ex effective vaccines, so we have to stop the bad bugs, except pesticides can be toxic, and clearing standing water doesn't work, because people can never find all the places bad bugs live. So they almost always come back, biting and breeding. We need a better way to stop the bad bugs. Luckily, there are good bugs. Good bugs are the same kind of mosquito, but good bugs can't bite. Good bugs can't breed. And most importantly, good bugs can stop bad bugs. Okay. There's a, there's a little rhythm to this. There's a, and it's, it's serious. Um, but don't try to play into making the words have a particular meaning. Just share this information in, in the mood that it's in. It's kind of serious. Deadly. Okay, sorry, I'll go. The 
the deadliest animal in the world. Sorry, I'm just going to add that in again. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah. It should be that. <laughs> yeah, the uh, deadliest yeah, and- animal in the world kills more people each year than any other animal combined. I'm going to stop you Make for sense. a minute. I'm going to stop you for a minute. Yeah. Uh, it it's a little reedy with you know, the deadliest animal in the world kills more people each year than you're reading the words and not sharing the information. You're not telling the story. Give me the idea of telling the story. Okay. The deadliest animal in the De- world. Listen for a minute. Okay. The, de- the deadliest animal in the world kills more people each year than every other animal combined, makes hundreds of millions of people sick, and is half the length of a staple. It's the mosquito. And a lot of mosquitoes are bad bugs. Like one species, Aedes aegypti. These bad bugs bite, and these bad bugs breed. They're an invasive species that spreads diseases like Zika, Dengue, and Chikungunya. Diseases that stop people from working and going to school. Now, you notice I'm not giving a lot of of inflection. I'm being serious and sharing the information and telling the story. Give it, give it another okay. shot. Sounds good. The deadliest animal in the world kills more people each year than every other animal combined, makes hundreds of millions of people sick, and is half the length of a staple. It's the mosquito, and a lot of mosquitoes are bad bugs. Like one species, Aedes aegypti, these bad bugs bite, and these bad bugs breed. They're an invasive species that spreads diseases like Zika, Dengue, and Chikungunya. Diseases that stop people from working and going to school. Okay, I'm going to stop you once. I'm going to stop. There, there, were, there was a lot of good stuff in there. But one thing I want you to kind of uh, stop doing is ending phrases up. Well, like, girl like talk. It, well, it's not necessarily girl talk. Uh, but what it does do is it takes away your power. It takes away the sense of, I can believe and trust this person. Uh, That's and, 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 and in this case, trust that the information is solid. Hey, Dave, yes. real quickly, show us an example of an up and a down read on one of the lines. Yeah. The deadliest animal in the world kills more people each year than every other animal combined. Makes hundreds of millions of people sick. Okay, did I lose some of? Did you? I lose some of the power that I had, some of the believability, some of my authority in telling this story, because I ended yeah. phrases. The deadliest animal in the world kills more people each year than every other animal combined. Makes hundreds of millions of people sick, and is half the length of a staple. Did who'd you believe? Yeah, I hear it. All right. Take that note and let's hear you do it. The deadliest animal in the world kills more people each year than every other animal combined, makes hundreds of millions of people sick, and is half the length of a staple. It's the mosquito. And a lot of mosquitoes are bad bugs. Like one species, Aedes aegypti, these bad bugs bite, and these bad bugs breed. They're an invasive species that spreads diseases like Zika, Dengue, and Chikungunya. Okay, just for time, <laughs> just for time, I'm going to stop you there. Didn't that feel better? And I bet you know, yeah. if, if 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 mics were on and I could say people who who like that better clap, we'd be we'd be hearing a lot of of that. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Now, the one thing I want to add to that, and we'll just do it, uh, two or three of these lines, we won't go all the way through, is I want you to relax your enunciation a little bit. Uh, and this becomes one of the hardest things uh, for voice actors. Uh, you hear everything I'm saying, but I'm gliding over the words. The deadliest animal in the world kills more people each year than every other animal combined. I'm not saying the deadliest animal in the world. Kills more people each year. Do you hear the difference? Yeah. Okay. Relax your enunciation a little bit. Now, just go down through uh, bad bugs, and a lot of mosquitoes are bad bugs. 
the deadliest animal in the world, kills more people each year than every other animal combined, makes hundreds of millions of people sick, and is half the length of the staple. It's the mosquito, and a lot of mosquitoes are bad bugs. Okay, you softened it up a little bit, and it got a little better. The one complaint I would make, uh, you went up on uh, world in, in the first line. But other than that, yeah. we you moved it forward a little bit. Nicely done. Nicely done. Thank you. Thank you very much. You are welcome very much. And uh, let's do one more narration here. Um, perhaps we, we found Janet? Uh, let's see. If Janet is available now, let me see, Janet. Are you? I'm going to try one more time. If I can find you here. Janet Peters, are you there? You are. Oh, oh, am I on? There you are. Hey, how you doing, Janet? Oh, yay, hi. Hi, Dave. <laughs> hi, Fred. <laughs> All right. I, I, I've got a script for you. Uh, here, Keynote Films. It's a sports script. Uh, we're not going to oh. go all the way down through this. It would take too long. Um, right. But can you see it well on your screen? Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Wait a minute. Hold on. Let me get my glasses. Um, okay. Oh, it's sports, eh? Yeah. But, you know, it's... It, it, and it, with my voice, it's sports, but I, you know... Okay. my voice, I can do a sport. Yeah. But I tell you what, let me read a little bit of it for you, just so you hear it. Okay. There are moments that define us all. Bits of time, alone or stitched together, that help to shape our being, that make us, us. Some are measured in seconds, milliseconds even. Some in yards, feet, or inches. Others unfold over the course of days or years. They can lead down, they can lead down an uncharted pathway or push us beyond a place we once thought unattainable. They don't always mark the beginning or end of a journey. The moment is often the journey itself, which brings us here, to this moment, and to these legendary destinations, renowned for inspiring greatness and on the verge of something even greater. Tractown, mm. Gorgon, USA. We'll stop there. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> okay. I'm nervous. I don't know why I am. You know, you know what? And, and this is a place not to be nervous because I this know. is all about uh, we're all in this together. Everybody that's listening is rooting for you. Okay. All right. Okay. Let me think. Should I read it first out loud? Or I did. I was reading along with you. But... Okay. Well, I'll tell you what. Just uh, see if you can just give it a shot. Okay. 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 There are moments that define us all, bits of time, alone or stitched together, that help to shape our being, that makes us, us. Some are measured in seconds, milliseconds, even some in yards, feet or inches. Others unfold over the course of days or years. They can lead down an uncharted pathway, or push us beyond a place we once thought unattainable. They don't always mark the beginning or end of a journey, the moment is often the journey itself, which brings us here, to this moment, and to these legendary destinations, renowned for inspiring greatness and on the verge of something even greater. Tractown, Oregon, USA. Okay. Now, with that marvelous instrument you have, you, mm. you don't have to try to make the words have meaning by the song. That okay, you, okay. you know, one, one of the banes of voiceover is our attempt to, there are moments that define us all, bits of time alone or stitched together that, okay, I'm overdoing it, but okay. keep your voice, you know, uh, don't, don't do the sing song thing, flatten it out a little bit. There are okay. mo uh, and, and just, there are moments that define us all, bits of time alone or stitched together that help us shape our be, that make us us some are measured in seconds milliseconds even the 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 fluctuation okay. the song okay. of my voice is 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 not very varied okay all right here we go all right i'm gonna i hope i i hope i understood what you meant okay i think i did okay <clears throat> sorry there are moments that define us all bits of time alone or stitched together, that help to shape our being, 
that makes us us. Some are measured in seconds, milliseconds even. Okay, I'm going to stop you. Uh, take your time, take your time, take your time. Okay. And okay. once again, flatten it out. Don't try to make the words uh, have meaning by uh, the fluctuation right. of, of okay, your voice, the song. No, no, right. it's, it's not to apologize. I'm no, trying. I know that. Are you there? Yep, I'm listening. All right, thought you hung up on me. <laughs> I've been kicked off the stage before, honey. <laughs> All right, hold on. I'm gonna try. Here we go. I'm just gonna. I'm relaxing now. I'm sitting yeah. back. No sing songy. Okay. There are moments that define us all. Bits of time, alone or stitched together, that help to shape our being. That makes us us. Some are measured in seconds, milliseconds even, some in yards, feet, or inches. Others unfold over the course of days or years. They can lead down an uncharted pathway or push us beyond a place we once thought unattainable. They don't always mark the beginning or end of a journey. The moment is often the journey itself, which brings us here to this moment and to these legendary destinations renowned, renowned or inspiring greatness, and on the verge of something even greater. Track Trown, Oregon, USA. Okay, whoa, what was that? Somebody's calling, they heard you and they're calling. My sister Arlene, she's actually calling me. Okay, that was, right. that, that was better. And guess what, you can even do less. Uh, this, is one wow. of the, this is one of the big issues with us in voiceover and why some people book and some people don't. The people right. who book aren't trying so hard, aren't pushing, aren't, and don't let the words tell you when to say them. They're working for you. You say them when you're ready. This is a script you don't need to rush. I'm going to give okay. you, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to give you another read, but I'm going to give you an example of what I'm talking about. Okay. There are moments that define us all. Bits of time, alone or stitched together, that help to shape our being that make us, us. Some are measured in seconds, milliseconds even. Some in yards, feet, or inches. Others unfold over the course of days or years. They can lead down an uncharted pathway or push us beyond a place we once thought unattainable. They don't always mark the beginning or end of a journey. The moment is often the journey itself, which brings us here to this moment and to these legendary destinations, renowned for inspiring greatness and on the verge of something even greater. Tractow, Oregon, USA. Now, oh, that was awesome. <laughs> okay. yeah, don't rush, Make, let the words, uh, you're, you're working the words, they're not working you. Don't say, them, you be don't say them before they need to be said. Right, I hear you. All right, but nice work. Give her a hand, everybody. And once and once again, we're we're moving along fast. Let's talk video games. Um, and uh, people often ask me, well, why should I involve myself in video games? Well, you don't have to. Uh, but it is one of the fast. No, I take it back. It is the fastest growing uh, business in the entertainment business. Uh more money than music and movies combined. No movie has ever made a billion dollars in a day. 2013 and 14 video games did. Grand Theft Auto, Call of Duty, Ghost, Halo, Destiny. Uh, other titles like World of Warcraft have earned billions of dollars, actually uh, more like $15 billion over the course of a decade or so. 2017 worldwide profits for the video game industry hit $109 billion. Uh, U.S. market alone was $22 billion, uh, $2 billion more than expected in 2016, and $18 billion more uh, than was expected the year before. Uh, so this is a business that is doing well. Uh, video games, okay, I said that. More money, I said that. Esports is a thing. Uh, pro, uh, pro gamers are making, making millions of dollars playing video games. Colleges and universities not only have game development curriculums, but some are now offering scholarships 
to gamers so that they can field teams. Uh, wow, you could be a, a Bruin playing video games. Video games uh, have become extra long movies that you can experience again and again and never have the same experience. Rules of thumb for video game acting. Uh, acting style for video games, most similar to theater and feature film. Video game performances lean toward drama as opposed to animation, which leans towards comedy. Uh, it's not to say that we don't have comedy in, in video games. We do. Uh, but it tends to be uh, more theatrical comedy as opposed to wacky comedy uh, like we find in cartoons. Performances are more natural and nuanced. If choosing between enunciation and emotion, choose the emotion. Um, and in my workshops with video games, you learn how to discover the tone of the video game, how to create believable characters, how to take the words off the page. How to overcome the game actors, uh, overcome the game actors acting challenges. Lines are, well, these are the challenges. <laughs> Lines are read instead of memorized. There are no other actors to react to. There's no blocking, no costume. And no matter your movement, you have to stay on mic. Um, and one of my goals for my students is to get them to learn to free themselves from the tyranny of words and punctuation. Because in real life, we are not bound by words and punctuation. Words come to us a little at a time. We pause when we need a breath. You know, this question people, well, when do I breathe? Well, do you think about when you breathe, when you're just talking? No, you don't. And I'm going to give you an example of why punctuation isn't necessary uh, for you to pay attention to it all the time. If you say, Hello, Bob. You know how it's written? Hello, comma, Bob. But you pay no attention to that comma between hello and Bob. You don't go, hello, Bob. You go, hello, Bob. But grammatically, the comma needs to be in there. So oftentimes, uh, punctuation is for the sake of grammatical rules that in real life, spoken, we pay no attention to. All right. Let's, uh, let's find somebody. Oh, we need a guy now. We need a guy now. Look at some copy. Yeah, I think I'm looking at uh, Nathan here. Nathan, get yourself ready because you're about to be unmuted. Nathan, can you hear me? You're unmuted. Go ahead. Hey, Nathan, how you doing, man? Hello. Nathan, going once? Hello? Oh, there he is. How you doing, Nathan? All right, good. Um, you know, uh, how old are you, Nathan? Just, just so I'm asking. Yeah, I'm 22. You're 23. Uh, let's 22. see. Oh, 22. Um, well, let's, let's see what you can do with this. Uh, this is a character, uh, and they give you some information. Uh, who they're thinking about would be like a Benedict Cumberbatch. Uh, this is a very stylized performance. This is very formal in some ways uh, uh did you watch game of thrones uh yeah sort of yeah okay I oh there we talk about all the time yeah well this <laughs> this is more that style of acting and we have several uh phrases here that this particular character is saying uh this is a character uh what do they say tony stark meets dr doom brilliant student of science and magic um and after you know being by himself and discovering uh, how to channel the laws of nature. Uh, he steps forward, and of course, people think he's crazy, uh, and he's a uh, doesn't get along with everybody. Uh, and these are the things he says. So, what do any of you know about true power? The cosmos does not obey laws; only the will. Cling to humanity, fail to evolve. Few see the horizon and dare to reach beyond. Witness the power to fold infinity. Give me um, each one of those lines as this character. Okay. Uh, he, ha he has contempt for most people. Okay. What do any of you know about true power? The cosmos don't obey the laws, only the will. Cling to humanity, fail to evolve. Few see the horizon and dare to reach beyond. 
witness the power to fold infinity. Okay. Um, you have a voice that can handle this. Now what I want you to do is slow it down a little bit. Everything this guy says is important, or at least he thinks so. Uh, and uh, make sure that, you know, the cosmos does not obey laws. Don't don't turn that into the cosmos don't obey laws. Okay. <laughs> um, you know, there, there are times we could do that. Uh, sometimes we're playing a character that maybe... Uh, uh, don't would be the word he would say, and you might have a conversation with the writer or director that, you know, well, this, this character wouldn't say that, but this character does. I'll give you an idea of, of how he would sound. What do any of you know about true power? The cosmos does not obey laws, only the will. Cling to humanity, fail to evolve. Few see the horizon and dare to reach me. Witness the power to fold infinity. Okay. Give me, give me a little of that feel. All right. What do any of you know about true power? The cosmos does not. The cosmos does not obey laws. Only the will. Cling to humanity. Fail to evolve. Few see the horizon and dare to reach beyond. Witness the power to fold infinity. Nice. Now, what I want you to do, I'm going to give you one more read on this. I want you to, you know, you, where are you from? New York. New York? Okay. You got a little, yeah, you got a little of that New York thing. Uh, I want you to enunciate this even more. What do any of you know about true power? The cosmos does not obey laws. Uh, in your ordinary life, you don't have to enunciate that clearly. Neither do I. Uh, but this character calls for it. Uh, imagine yourself a James Earl Jones, a, a, a Morgan Freeman. I can think of a number of other uh, black actors with rich, deep voices that could play this part with great dignity and, and enunciation and clear and powerful. And you've got the voice to do that. What do any of you know about true power? The cosmos, do not, the cosmos does not obey laws, only the will. Cling to humanity, fail to evolve. Few see the horizon and dare to reach beyond. Witness the power to fold infinity. One last time, I want you to slow it down. Instead of, what do any of you know about? What do any of you know about true power? Cosmos does not obey laws, only the will. Cling to humanity, fail to evolve. Now, sometimes you're nervous, you know, doing this in, in front of a, a bunch of people. Forget about that. Take your time. Uh, what do any of you know about true power? The cosmos does not obey laws, only the will. Cling to humanity, fail to evolve. Few see the horizon and dare to reach beyond. Witness the power to fold infinity. Nice, nice. Getting better. Getting better. Uh, for video, you know, there's some characters you're going to play in video games. Just who you are is great, but sometimes, sometimes you're going to want to up your enunciation game. Uh, and just. Just saying, just saying. Uh, nicely done, nicely done. Yeah. All right, Thank you. and we need a lady now. Okay, let me search for one second. I'm going to go Alexandra. I knew an Alexandra not too long ago. Hold on, Alexandra, you're at the very top of the list here, and you're now unmuted. Hey, Alexandra, how are you? I'm great. Thank you so much for picking me. No, oh, well, good, 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 good. Um, well, this is a character, Elizabeth Hudson. Uh, she is on a spaceship. Um, and on this particular game, at the end of every workday, uh, the, the characters go back to their quarters and they do a video dialogue, a video uh, diary. 
and this is hers. And she is talking about, she first mentions her name and encrypted personal log, the date. And then she goes into what she's talking about. I'm going to read it to you mm -hmm. one time uh, so you hear the words before you jump in. Scientist Elizabeth Hudson, encrypted personal log 9 2037 Alex is pushing and testing the limits of our extraction process. Hard. Harder than I would, but I can't argue with the results. We are producing breathable oxygen from ordinary terrestrial plant life in outer space. Food production is a success as well. Everything tests out. We are going through more H4 cells than we planned for or brought with us. There's been a few scary moments, but it is working. These are small steps. But we have the beginnings of renewable and sustainable resources that support human life on other planets. Now, that was just a read for you to hear it. I want you to imagine her in her quarters by herself, end of the day, she's possibly a little tired, and she doesn't have a script. These are her thoughts. So you can take your time, you can let some of these words come to her, uh, and the nonverbals. Size, work. Okay. Scientist Elizabeth Hudson, encrypted personal log, 9 2037 Alex is pushing and testing the limits of our extraction process. Hard. Harder than I would. But I can't argue with the results. We are producing breathable oxygen from ordinary terrestrial life in outer space. Food production is a success as well. Everything tests out. We are going through more H4 cells than we had planned for or brought with us. There's been a few scary moments, but it's working. These are all small steps, but we have beginnings of renewable and sustainable resources support human life on other planets okay where you you know you you have a voice that is really wonderful for this um you're not over enunciating anything uh you're right in the pocket of of what where the volume should be the one thing i'm mm -hmm. missing um is letting the words come to you a little bit more and maybe some of the nonverbals. imagine the th she says uh, Elizabeth Hudson encrypted personal log 9 12 20, 37, every doggone day. Well, it would be <laughs> 9 12 13 14, uh, on different days. But now it's this is what she's thinking about. She's going over her day. She doesn't have mm -hmm. a script. She doesn't know exactly how she's going to put these words together. I'll give you an idea of what I mean. Yes. Scientist Elizabeth Hudson encrypted personal log 9 12 2037. Alex is pushing and testing the limits of our extraction process. Hard. Harder than I would. Can't argue with the results. We are produce. Get the idea? Yes, definitely. She's tired. She's it's and she's tired of making these logs. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and, and she may or may not be, but. The thoughts are coming to her. Okay. This is not a script she's reading. Okay. <clears throat> Scientist Elizabeth Hudson, personalized personal log, 9 37 Alex is pushing and testing the limits of our extraction process. Hard. Harder than I would. I can't argue with the results. We are producing breathable oxygen from ordinary terrestrial life in outer space. I'm going to stop you. I'm going to stop you. This read mm. isn't that much. This read is not different from the read before. And now it's a nice read. But mm -hmm. let the words come to her. Mm. In, in real life, how we speak is imperfect. Definitely. The, the writer can't write in all our inner dialogue, our questions, our thoughts, uh, why we say all the things we say. And, but in real life, uh, it has to come to her. She has to think of what she's saying. 
I'm, I'm trying to give you an idea of that as I'm saying it. Mm. Allow her to have, allow her to take a breath as she's, <sighs> Alex is, has to find the word, pushing and testing the limits of our extraction process. Hard. Harder than I would, but, but if you want to dirty it up, the copy a little bit, but, but I, I, I can't. Okay. One more time. All right. <clears throat> Scientist Elizabeth Hudson, encrypted personal log, 9-12-23-7. Alex is pushing and testing the limits of our extraction process. Hard. Harder than I would, but I can't argue with the results. We are producing breathable oxygen from ordinary terrestrial plant life in outer space. Food production is a success as well. Everything tests out. We are going through more H4 cells than we had planned for or brought with us. There's been a few scary moments, but it is working. These are small steps, but we have the beginnings of renewable and sustainable resources that support human life on other planets. Very, very Bravo. nice. Bravo. Bravo. Well done. Thank you. Well done. Yeah, well done. All right. Let, let's see. Um, have we got a guy? Let's see. I'm trying to figure out. What? Have we got one more guy? Fred, are you there, Fred? Did I lose you, Fred? Sorry, I was on, I was muted by talking. Yeah, we do, and we have Theodore. Hold on, let me bring Theodore up for us. Um, hold on here. And you were reading my mind because we did need the copy a little bit larger size. Uh, they're perfect. Oh, Fred. And Theodore, you're unmuted. Theodore, are you there with us? Go ahead and turn on your mic. I unmuted you, but I don't see the mic coming green, which means you're not coming through for us. Can you change that? I'll give you one, two, three, Theodore, maybe fix that. We'll come back to you. Uh, let me try another person who has volunteered here as well. Uh, let me see, let me see, let me see. Hold on. I am going to, okay, how about, hey, Bill, do you want to do this? I, I saw you asked a question, but I'm going to assume that Bill Thompson would want to play here. One second, I will bring Bill up. Bill, you are unmuted. Bill, go ahead. Okay, thanks. How are you doing, Bill? Doing quite well, thanks, Dave. Good, good, good. Okay, I'm going to give you your choice. Uh, mm -hmm. You can play uh, a purveyor of um, ancient artifacts or an Indiana Jones type character. Hmm. Um, does the purveyor include the accent or no? You can. It, if you do the if you can do the accent, great. Okay. Let's go with that. All right. Well, that's the one I've got right in front of us. Uh now, ordinarily, uh in a situation like this, when I'm working with copy, they had asked for uh Indian male of a certain age, a certain right. and, and the accent. That is not my concern here. My concern is the acting. If you can do the accent and do it well, uh, and it doesn't uh, hurt the acting super. Um, but, uh, we're, and we're only going to do a little bit of this. We're going to do this first, uh, paragraph. You're looking at an amethyst contaminated by veins of dark matter. It is the product of cosmic upheaval playing out over millennia. Who would I be to tell you what it's worth? I'll give you a price that reflects only the danger I endured to obtain it. Okay. I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll not do the exit the first time. We'll see. Okay. okay. You're looking at an amethyst contaminated by veins of dark matter. It is the product of cosmic upheaval playing out over millennia. Who would I be to tell you what it's worth? I'll give you a price that reflects only the danger I endured to obtain it. Okay. I've never been partial to... Okay. Uh, let's just do this first one. Now, sure. wh where were you? Where was I? Um, 
telling the tale of this object. Okay, well, we always want to put ourselves now with the, with the young lady before. Uh, I said, okay, mm-hmm. you're on your ship, you're in your quarters at this time right. of day. I didn't give you that. I was I was going to see if uh, what you would do with it. Uh, he is in his shop. Somebody is looking at this All thing right. that he is describing, over and the uh, over the counter, and perhaps he just notices them looking, and then he comes over, um, and uh, he, he at some point when he says, "Who would I be to tell you what it's worth?" You notice nobody asks him a question, mm-hmm. but sometimes people ask a question with a look, uh, with a gesture. Uh, right. So let's assume that's what happened, and uh, let's also assume that he's stepping into frame with this guy. If it were a picture, you're looking at an amethyst, and then he points out those veins of dark matter. Mm-hmm. So we're assuming there may have been a question about the value of it before yeah. that led to this. Okay. Well, well, possibly, or or the look uh, right mm-hmm. at that mm-hmm. moment. I'll let you sure. decide. All right. You're looking at an amethyst contaminated by veins of dark matter. It is the product of cosmic upheaval playing out over millennia. Who would I be to tell you what it's worth? I'll give you a price that reflects only the danger I endured to obtain it. Okay. I've, you've you've got a nice you've got a nice voice. Um a lot of times voices now that are too big, too deep, too beautiful um get in the way of the acting. Uh because mm. Because they're often people that are listening to their voices. Um, but I want you to do even less. Take your time. I'll give you an idea of what I'm, I'm, I'm in my shop. I see this guy looking at this thing. And I walk over. And as I walk over, I say, ah, you're looking at an amethyst. Contaminated by veins of dark. Mm-hmm. It is the product of cosmic upheaval playing out over. Who would I be to tell you what it's worth? I'll give you a price that reflects only the danger to obtain it. Did you did did you buy that as a character? Oh yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Bring me a little more of that. Right now, what I'm hearing are the words, mm-hmm. but not where this guy is, how he really feels about uh, what he's doing. Sure. You're looking at an amethyst contaminated by veins of dark matter. It's a product of cosmic upheaval playing out over millennia. Who would I be to tell you what it's worth? I'll give you a price that reflects only the danger I endured to obtain it. Um, I've never been partial to the word dealing. My job is to connect the right treasure with whom it belongs. I consider myself a matchmaker. Well, let's look at that one. Let me hear a little bit. uh, He's saying this calmly, but... When he says, I've never been partial to the word dealing, mm. uh, there's a, give him a little bite. Sure. Okay. Uh, so start with the second yeah, one? Start with that second one. Okay. I've never been partial to the word dealing. My job is to connect the right treasure with whom it belongs. I consider myself a matchmaker. Okay. Um. Let's just say he really wasn't looking in the guy when the guy uh, said he was dealing things. Um, mm. Let's have him be a little annoyed without really looking at the guy. I'll, g- I'll give you an idea what I mean. Uh, the guy said what he said, and he goes, I've never been partial to the word dealing. My job is to connect the right treasure with whom it belongs. Consider myself a matchmaker. I'm not <laughs> playing the words. I'm right. playing the character. Play the character a little bit more. Exactly. Okay. I've never been partial to the word dealing. My job is to connect the right treasure with whom it belongs. I consider myself a matchmaker. Okay, that's a little better. Uh, and let's just do one more. Uh, you pick. Uh, uh, sample three or sample four? Oh, how about... Okay. My tradition teaches never to initiate combat. Only when all other options are exhausted do I engage an enemy. If I had it my way, I'd sneak in, procure the target, and be gone before anyone started shooting. I'm not fond of taking lives. 
Okay. Uh, what does that? What does this tell you about this character? He's uh, pretty capable of some dastardly deeds. But, <laughs> yes. Uh, <laughs> shows a little bit of a uh, you know re re refrain n notion of refraining when he can. Yeah. Well, you know, just like a lot of traditions teach us uh, to refrain from combat, and and yet mm -hmm. we and yet we do all over the world. Uh, <laughs> Uh, one more time, uh, let him try to be a, a little bit sanctimonious. But by the <laughs> end, um, he, he's still a thief. And, mm -hmm. and he enjoys that, but uh, perhaps not killing. Got it. My tradition teaches never to initiate combat. Only when all other options are exhausted do I engage an enemy. If I had it my way, I'd sneak in... Procure the target and be gone before anyone started shooting. I'm not fond of taking lives. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Nice. Everybody, give yeah. him a hand. Nicely done. Nicely oh, I, done. I got three letters for you, Dave. What's that? K R K R E. Oh my goodness, man! Back in the day on the radio. Well, uh, suffice to say that Bill Thompson that showed up with blonde hair on the Prophet's in at your place. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There you go. Well, you, you, you never know when people are going to okay. track you down. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hey, thanks for, thanks for uh, tuning in, man. Nice stuff. And uh, let's see. Let's move on. Uh, you know, we've covered a lot of stuff. And, you know, Fred, I'm going to let you uh, do yeah. what you do. I'll be happy to. Yeah. So um, Dave has uh, obviously presented all of the things. That, I mean, I think we've actually talked and, and, and addressed everything that's in the voiceover PhD, which I, I then sent out to people via the chat box there. You can click on it. And what we've done is we put together kind of a package to give you kind of the all Dave, all the time in all genres package. And it's it's really got everything in it. And we did these individually and we did them for the prices that I've listed there, which is we had the we had actually three VO for games classes, um, a narration for voice actors class, master class on auditioning, how to do that, um, a promo class specifically geared to, to doing promos, class on self-directing, and all of that combined was well over 40 hours of material and we boiled it down so that you can get it all for a really 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 discounted price um so if you click on voiceover phd this will give you access to all of this and it's you know it's it's basically it's probably about 80 or more percent off of what others were charged obviously you're not getting to participate in the live class but you're getting pretty darn close and for me, at least, it'd be a great, you know, if you want to go and, and get started doing the business and following what Dave's saying to do, this would be a great place to start. Uh, at some point in the future, after you go through it, if you want to get Dave's help individually, he's always available to do that. So other than that brief promo, I'll give it back to you, Dave. Okay. Uh, I just want to highlight some of the things we went over. Uh, voice acting for video games. One, find out the style of the game. Um, it's not about the words. It's about the feeling behind the words. Um, answer the question for yourself. What happened the moments before your character speaks? I should say the seconds before. Know what your character is thinking, feeling, doing, who your character is talking to, and what's that relationship? Don't make the words precious. Make the character precious. Uh, when we talk about narration uh, highlights, uh, it holds the most opportunity for voice actors. Uh, there's more work in narration than anything else. And narration is storytelling. Be interested in what you're saying so your, your listener will also be interested. Uh, break up sentences into complete thoughts. Uh, this is a technique. Uh, and once you learn how to do this, you'll, you'll know exactly where to breathe. Uh, and you'll know exactly how to put uh, the sentences together in a way that they're easily understood and easily said. Uh, and narration is also the easiest genre to find work. 
uh, auditioning highlight. Familiarize yourself with the copy by doing the three and three. Read it three times in your head, then mouth it three times before you record anything. By the time you start recording, by the time you start your performance, the words will only be there to remind you of what you are saying. Read the phrases, not the words. Know who you are and who you are talking to. Discover who you are and what your signature voice is. Um, and there's some ways uh, to go over that. As a matter of fact, I had not gone, gone through some of that. Talk to your friends and family and even some people you don't know. Have a conversation and say, when I speak to you, what comes to mind? Who do you think I am? Do you believe me? Do you find me funny? Do you find me intriguing? Uh, am I, does it, do I sound like a person you can trust? Um, do I, does it make you laugh when you hear me? Whatever it is about you that people comment on when you speak, is the thing that's going to make you money with, with one caveat. If they say you've got a beautiful voice, maybe not. Because all too often people come with beautiful voices and have no acting ability. And what happens with a lot of those people is they're so used to people saying what a beautiful voice they have that they think that's the way to do this business. It so is not. Uh, the more beautiful your voice, the faster bad acting shows up. Okay. Uh, how to enter the lucrative promo field highlights. TV promos and trailers are one of the most lucrative areas in voiceover. Uh, the drama read technique is typically uh, some word elongation and less volume. Uh, remember when I was talking about just a bit over a whisper. That's the drama. Comedy read is typically very natural and off the cuff. Hey, the comedy reads this guy. He's just who you are, enjoying what you're talking about. Uh, and thanks to the variety of targeted programming for stations, there are, there's lots of promo work. Uh, all those uh, TV stations, local and national, need voices. Self-directing class. Familiarize yourself with the copy. We did that. Uh, stop trying to sound like somebody else. Uh, there is something special about you no matter who you are. Forget sing-songing your way through copy. Just say it as you feel it. You don't sing-song in your real life, do you? No. You feel a certain way, you say a certain thing, and that's the way it comes out. Do the same thing with the copy you read. Know who you are and talking to and your uh, spokes voice, narrator, promo voice, character relationship to them. Let your worldview speak through the copy so that you are more genuine. We all have a particular view of the world based on uh, what we've been through, what our age is, our level of education, and so forth. That's what you, you want to tap into. Uh, I'll give you a big tip right now. Sometime, uh, turn on your recorder on your phone when friends and family are over, you're in regular conversation. Turn that on and record yourself 15 minutes, half an hour. Then go back and listen. What do you sound like when you're just being you? That's the person you want to bring to your voiceover work. We're going to learn uh, the different genres and, and some techniques. But that person you heard uh, who was having fun with friends and family or having a serious discussion with friends and family, that's who you are. That's who you want to be. Um. Uh, once again, I'll take this. yeah, you don't like doing this part of it. I'll I'll, I'll do the sell part, <laughs> but really it isn't folks. One of the things is when this is done, we're going to put the copy of this as well as the last time we did this up on the site for each of your PhD. So feel free to go back there and review it over and over again, but it's substantially discounted for all of the material that we've talked about here tonight. So it really is a good deal. We're not really sure how long we're going to keep it up at this price. Um, but it's, it really is a, a, a complete, like, that's why we call it voice over PhD. It's like a complete course in the VO business, right? Dave? Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. And, uh, let's see what, uh, okay. uh, well, I went over again. Here's what you learn: how to audition and read copies so that you substantially increase your booking. 
about TV promos and trailers, the variety, the very uh, styles and techniques to become a promo voice about the numerous opportunities in the various areas of narration uh, and techniques to improve your narration success. You'll learn how to create characters that will get you parts in the biggest business and showbiz that, of course, video games. So I'll pop back there and, and there it is. And uh, one more time and we can say goodbye. Yeah, and there you have it. So it's a whole, a whole like compendium of all the material we've done over the last couple of years. And there's a lot of value here. And I always like to say to people, look, if you're trying to break into the voiceover business or you're already in the VO business, that if you get a job or two additional as a result of one or two ideas you found here, it's obviously well, well worth it. So Dave, I want to thank you for doing this. I want to thank everyone for being here. And again, we'll put this up within the next 24 hours if you want to hear it again, if you did a read, or if you want to review it. So, Dave, again, thank you for your time. Any final thoughts? Uh, yeah, I just want to thank everybody for stopping by and uh, hanging with me. I really want to thank the people uh, who put themselves on the line and uh, got in to be uh, have me rake them over the coals uh, uh, with, with coaching. Um, I respect you because it takes some courage to do that. And, uh, you know, patting you all on the back to do what it takes uh, to get yourself to the next level. Uh, a reminder, every Wednesday, every Wednesday I'm in town anyway, uh, ask Dave Fenoy anything. Uh, and this will be up for a, a bit. Uh, I may even post it on uh, Facebook so you have a chance to uh, see it again there and, and consider uh, taking this deal. I promise you, as I promise every student, I will make you a better voiceover actor. You will book more. You will have more confidence. Uh, you will step into the booth uh, with freedom uh, over the words. I agree. Thank you all for being here. And again, I think Dave is really a master at, at teaching as, as well as being a voice actor himself. So again, folks, Thank you, Dave. Thank you again. Good night to all. Nighty night. Night.